My name is Richard Evans uh, from AME Canada. I'm going to be your facilitator for today's session. Uh, welcome to AME's Two Second Lean Tour Series. For those of you who've joined us previously, we, uh, we go around the world and do deep dives into some fascinating organizations that have followed Paul Aker's philosophy of, of growing people. Uh, we've actually been uh, to many companies, as you can see here, <clears throat> the last one being Cambridge Air Solutions down in St. Louis. Uh, today's session is truly, truly amazing. We're going to visit Hugh Carnahan and his teams at Greater Ozarks Realty. And next year, many, many more to come. So we're going to keep you in suspense for the schedule next year, and we'll release it after Christmas. So our agenda as normal is 30 minute tour with a Q&A afterwards. So if you've actually got some questions, please put them in the chat and we'll answer them as best we can afterwards. And today we're gonna to fly from our home base in Toronto down to Springfield, Missouri. And I'm gonna pass it over to our wonderful host, Paul Akers. Paul, take it away. All right, well, we're going to have a great time. You know, one of the things that's so unusual about Two Second Lean and the people that do it are they're fearless. And Hugh is the best example of that. Hugh took, Hugh took on a huge challenge in China, uh, transforming a culture over there with hundreds and hundreds of employees. And now he's taken on the challenge of transforming a real estate company into a vibrant Two Second Lean culture. So Hugh, I'm going to leave it at that. And it's all yours. Show us what you got. All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Hope you guys are having a great morning. <laughs> Hugh Carnahan is my name. I recognize many of you, some from the study missions and some elsewhere. Let me dive right into it. But uh, the quick agenda is we're going to go over our two second lean framework, which may differ from other people. Then we'll get into what a morning meeting looks like. We'll do a recap of that. For my background, in a former life, what I used to be was the second in command of a large manufacturing organization in China. I had the pleasure of bringing Two Second Lean to China. Initially, I think I was the very first person in the communist China to do that. And then afterwards, um, I was too stupid to know that morning meetings were supposed to be hard. So I just made it happen. And we held uh, the largest continuous morning meeting on earth uh, in one room, 350 people, and then we had to develop this. The framework I'm about to teach you got us, after 18 months of pushing against trying to push Two Second Lean, after 18 months of just horrible failure, I think some of you guys are smiling right now, you know what I'm talking about, just the pain that's behind that. And then we transformed it within a month. And then since I've left that company, I've now created my own company, Greater Reserves Realty, we were created basically slightly before COVID happened. When that happened, we were required to start decentralized. And so I want to do two-second lean. No one had done any two-second lean decentralized companies. So for us, we started our culture, created it from the ground up as a remote work, two-second lean environment completely. So these are the tools that we used. They were forged in fire and blood. Uh, and then they were very easily to be ported over. Also, I'm working on disadvantage. All of my employees, none of them were really in back, had a background in manufacturing at all. And so all the lessons that we have to teach with Lean, everyone has that same initial thought, just like most of your office workers do. Mm -hmm. None of this applies to me. Why am I here? This is a waste of my time. So with that, we're going to jump right into it. What is different about our morning meeting and our morning routine, I'm sorry, this is called the two second lean framework with ease. All right, the two second lean framework with ease. And so if you implement this strategy right here, it is an easy way, and then you have to let time pass, it is a very easy way to let things just roll forward. So first thing you start from 0730 to 0735, we have a theme called the 3S focus of the week, where that there's a five minute team meeting, up to five minutes, sometimes with 30 seconds or, or, or shorter, up to five minutes, and they say, all right guys, today we're doing Pokeyoki. Here's some examples of that, what do we wanna tackle? Hey guys, today we're doing Kaizen Foam. Here's a refresher for that, what do we wanna tackle? After that meeting, then we actually do the 3S work. 
So this is decentralized. The blue ones are decentralized, meaning each department or each small group does it by themselves. Then the entire company does 3S. No work is allowed. No work is allowed. You'll then, after that, we get into our morning meeting. Our morning meeting rotates through 100% of the company. When we bring a new hire on, they have one week of observing the rest of the company, and then they are thrown into the rotation. And so it doesn't matter if they do a good job or a bad job. It only matters if they tried. With this, we're going to get into a little bit about teaching, and we'll come back to the rest of the routine. Q. Yes. So a couple of things I want to clarify. You're working at five remote sites, correct? correct. So everyone knows. And then the uh, one in the one in the blue sites right here. Right. There's your five. And the one in the blue, the very first one, when you say you talk about that only at one site are you having that meeting. That meeting's happening at all sites, but it's not happening jointly. Is that correct? The very That's first correct. One. Each site is having their own meeting. And we do allow people to have the freedom. So let's say a site lead says, you know what? The three S focus of the week is Kanban cards, but we really need to work on strong visual controls instead. They, the, the team lead, the site lead, the department head, if you, for you guys, they, they might set a different agenda. But if there is no agenda, then we do this. What we would find, there's, there, there is no theme, right? You can follow the theme, but if there's something more pressing, you do that. If, if there's nothing more pressing, then we follow the theme. And this is the way to jumpstart, right? So many of us as two second lean entrepreneurs, when we're trying to bring this to our teams, we know it. And you're about to find out why. If you are in a lecture setting, so guys, if you're taking notes, uh, that's great. If you're coming in the chat, we'll see that. So if you're in a lecture setting, if you're in a lecture setting, the maximum, if you're not going through a language or corporate, uh, uh, cultural barrier, the maximum retention rate is 10%. That's the maximum rate that you'll remember and retain any of the knowledge. If you do something, if you are doing, if you're interacting, if you're taking notes, if you're asking questions in the chat so we can answer them later, right? That's at best 30%. So at best you're doing 30%. This is your hands-on learning, which we all say is the best, right? But if you are teaching, if you teach something, even if you're terrible at teaching it, just because you attempted to teach it, you are in the 90% range for retention, regardless of language, regardless of culture. So a great example of this. I went and helped Marfa Cabinet start. They are owned by Russians, and their workforce is Mexican, and they're in Chicago. They're no American. When they implemented two-second lean, they would... They would, they would basically present in Spanish, it would be translated to English by a Dutch guy and then translated into Russian. And they just let it run. And then, but it doesn't matter because it matters that 100% of the organization was teaching that. So we'll come back to that later, you'll see. After this morning meeting, then we do a leadership meeting. So it, it, it ends at 8.50, the maximum time is 8.50. We end sooner, that's great. We have, if necessary, we have a team, a team meeting I'm sorry, a, lead, a site leader meeting. This is the executive leadership with each site. Or if you guys are like a plant manager with the department heads, they have a quick discussion while everybody else is on a break. It takes up to 10 minutes. And then after that, each site then pops off at their own individual site and they do what's called battle plans. Again, it goes back to being decentralized. So the reason it's decentralized again is because we don't want to hold the whole organization hostage to go through and talk about things that don't apply to them specifically. So the two second lean framework with ease means that you're decentralized, you're centralized, and then you're, de and then you're decentralized again. This means that there's no more than a 24 hour period where our entire company has information go from the bottom of organization, organization meaning the executives who make decisions and don't provide value added work, to the top of the organization, meaning the work folks on the Gemba. Those folks on the Gemba are the top of the organization. And so within that, we're rapidly having information flow. Every day, we know the pulse of what's happening. It's allowed us to be extremely agile and aggressive and change. The 3S focus of the week, the purpose of having a theme, is to teach people. Because at the beginning, people are maybe willing to comply. However, they don't know what to do. 
So you teach them, they are responsible for teaching each other. The executives and the site leads aren't involved. It's the, the site leads uh, and the people individually are responsible for that. So this is the two second lien framework. We have five sites. We're gonna jump right into it right now with a morning meeting presentation, which you'll see now. This is Justin. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Justin. Good morning, Justin. Also, we've got Buffalo Lodge, you guys wave. And then we have Colonial wave. And these are all the different sites. Correct. And then we've got uh, we've got Oak Inn. You guys can wave over there. Hey. All right. All right. So good morning. Welcome to our morning meeting. Where is it? <laughs> can you guys see it? Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Yes, we can see it. All right. So uh, our next morning meeting leader is going to be Doug. So Doug, make sure you're ready for that. You're going to do great work. Um, after that, we have me today. Then we got Doug. Anna will be Friday. And Tyler will be Saturday. Uh, so you guys know those are coming up. All right. So our three S focus for this week was strong visual controls. Uh, so let me get into my example for what my strong visual control was. Oh, hey, kids. Uh, some strong visual controls for you right here. Got some uh, little lucky deals so that we can steal our trailer. But I have another one for the box trailer. So now we'd have the mark where it's green with the green keys. And we also have the green on the trailer itself. So we know these go together. And then this green is also a visual control for something else that I'll show you later. <laughs> All right, kids. So here we have the other trailer. Uh, so I've got blue on it to mark it, and then I've got blue, and if you see I've got keys, oh look, the blue one will go with the blue, and the green for the other trailer we just saw. But then if you go over here, my trailer hitch got one of the three ones, so I don't have to switch the actual switch, I just pull it out and flip around, but it's blue right here for this trailer, the other one's another size. Oh, look at that green, look at that, the green, the green goes to the other trailer, because there's green wow. on it, there's colors, because they're visual. Really cool. Go team. Yeah, so that's made it a lot easier for me uh, switching the trailers out and not just having to fumble and figure out what lot goes to what or, you know, trying to put a trailer on the wrong hitch because that doesn't usually work out real well. So you guys got anything to, to add to that? My well, what I, would, what I would say immediately is everything's a process and the process of hooking up the trailer needs to be improved. And you did an awesome mm -hmm. job of doing that. And uh, it makes perfect sense. That's Thank awesome, you. Justin. All right, move on. All right, so quote of the day. This is my quote of the day. Uh, the only things we keep permanently are those we give away. This is by a gentleman named Wade Phillips. Um, he actually donated uh, about 137,000 acres to uh, Scouting BSA out in New Mexico for the largest uh, youth camp out there that I worked at for a few summers. Um, so he had all of this land and wealth that he had accumulated, and then he just gave it away. Um, because in his mind, that was the only way to truly like, you know, keep something permanently and forever and have it kind of immortalized is to mm -hmm. give it away. Um, wow. So with this, it, in my mind, it pertains to lean and kind of this community because we're constantly sharing our ideas. We come up with these mm -hmm. ideas like the trailer of, hey, you know, I color coded this. Now I'm sharing it with you guys so you guys can take it and use it also. The same thing with all of our ideas and all the communities. We're constantly sharing all this and giving away these things. So technically we're keeping them forever because they're going to be around forever. You got so, it. All right. And just like you're sharing your morning meeting with us and how you're doing that in five different locations, which is amazing. Yep. Yep. All right. So gratefuls, my team, you guys got anything to be grateful for today? I'm grateful for Hugh and the adventure that we began. Awesome. All right. Anybody else? I'm grateful to you for the uh, introducing me to Two Second Lane and the uh, amount of changing that I have gone through since meeting him. Wow, that's cool. Awesome. Awesome. Can I can I ask what's the biggest change you've gone through? Being able to speak to people like you. Wow, <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Fantastic. Well done, Lisa. That that deserves an extra round, Lisa. Yeah, well that's done. phenomenal. She was one of our most timid uh, employees. Now she's a site lead. So, isn't that awesome? She and that's what we're doing: developing people. Are the best yep. that we have in the company. Oops, uh, I'm just grateful that we have the opportunity to really connect with teams that aren't at HQ. We're so lucky 
to have leveraged Zoom and a new process, and it's worked really well for us. So I'm, I'm pretty grateful every day, even if I'm in the car at home, you can kind of hear I'm getting over a cold. I can dial in from home and still be a part of the culture. I'm pretty grateful for that. We, we're wow. really lucky. Super. I'm grateful for technology. Uh, it allows us to have a decentralized organization. Uh, remote work for every site is remote by design. And uh, that's just very, very different. And I'm grateful to also share my company with you guys, hopefully, and help somebody. Awesome. All right. Um, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to be the one to run the morning meeting for everybody and kind of show you, you know, bring you into uh, our culture here a little bit. Um, so I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be able to do this. So, Fantastic. all right. All right. Let's do a little bit of stretching. So we're going to kind of look up and get that neck stretched out. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. And down. Five. Four, three, two, one. To the side. Five, four, three, two, one. To the other side. Five, four, three, two, and one. And roll it around if you want. Ah. All right. Oh, look, more stretching. All right, reach for the sky. Five, four, Three, two, one. All right, check those pit stains. Five, four, three, two, one. Other side. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, cross the front. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch. Five, four, three, Two and one. All right, shake it out. Keep on going. Transportation. So this is uh, the eight ways that I have for today out of the eight ways story. Uh, transportation, any movement of item or things. So for my example, I have these gas cans. Um, so for my job, there's a lot of vehicles and equipment that uses gas. Um, and so in order to fill them up, I either have to move the vehicle to the gas or move the gas to the vehicle. Plus, I have to fill these up, which involves taking these to a gas station somewhere, um, which that big red one's very heavy, so it's kind of hard to get around. So there's a lot of transportation and moving those around and then moving the fuel around and then moving the vehicles to the fuel and fuel to the vehicles. So there's a lot of transportation that goes into this. So with, with the story, I have an overproduction of vehicles that use fuel along with an overproduction of the amount of fuel that we have on hand. Um, so because of that overproduction, so we have to transport it. Um, those cans get very heavy, trying to take them to the gas station, from the gas station, take the vehicle to the where those are. Uh, so there's a lot of transportation in that. Um, inventory, um, in order to try to cut back on some of the transportation, we have to keep a, a lot more on hand. Uh, so I got a lot of inventory of fuel whenever we have them all filled up, which can run into defects. I've already had a defect on that big red can. The tube sat long enough that it ended up bending and cracking, so I had to cut it go through the overprocessing of cutting it, refitting it on there to get it to work. So there's a lot of overprocessing with that. Um, the motion of picking those cans up, carrying them around, moving them, bending a lot of, lot of motion uh, whenever you're dealing with those. Also along with the red one of when I use it to fill it up, it's got a little crank. So there's the motion of trying to crank it to get all that in. Anytime I have to either go get gas or fill up a vehicle, there's all the waiting of, you know, whatever job I was doing is now waiting. Uh, the customer's waiting on me to go get gas and the job's waiting for me to you know fill something up so there's a lot of waiting which goes into the wasted employee genius of every time i have to go fill up and mess with moving these big cans around or you know moving vehicle or moving these to the vehicle or whatever it is i'm filling up um it's just you know there's a lot of stuff i could be doing that's a lot more productive than just filling something up with gas so yeah so that is my eight-way story around transportation specifically so, so my you have a very good handle on what the eight ways are thank you my team, you guys got anything you want to add? Nope. You're just great. Oh, you guys are the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we too busy to improve? Absolutely not. We're never too busy to improve. All right. My improvement. All right, my two second improvement is going to be on my truck uh, for my gas cap. I have a locking gas cap because I don't trust people. Uh, there's kind of a little short spot to show how to put the key in there, but sometimes you can't really tell uh, where the spot's at on how to put it in. 
So what we do is I'm gonna put the key in. Oh, look, see, right there, didn't do it right. So make sure it's in right, so I know where the flat edge is. Then I'm just gonna take my Sharpie. So I know it's on the bottom right now. Pull that out, I'm just gonna put a little mark. So then that way every time I pull my key out, I know the flat edge goes toward that little mark. If you can see it. So the little mark right there, and the flat edge goes there, so they don't have to fumble and spin the key around 500 times trying to figure out how to unlock my truck so I can fill it up with gas. Go team. Awesome. So 500 times is a little bit of an exaggeration, but it was a minimum of three times every time I would try to open up my gas tank. Uh, Just, Justin? Yes. Does that gas cap, when it locks, can it either be up or down? Uh, I think it's typically that same direction when I put it on there, but I think there's a chance it could flip around. I haven't looked at it that closely. Yeah, um, I just wondered, because, I mean, if it's up or down, it looks really the same. I can see why you did it, and that's really cool. Yeah, that's there's, cool. Like, there, there's like, if you look closely, you can tell a slight difference, but not easily enough, which is why I put that little black mark on there. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, this has saved a lot of headache. I always forget about it until I go to fill up gas, and then I remember, and I really like, this is one of my favorite improvements that I've done is this one, because it just saves a lot of headache. So, all right. Two second lean. Yeah. All right, raving fans. We got any raving fans out there today? I'm a raving fan of Paul because, uh, especially with my my team and my company, if uh, if it weren't for Paul releasing free content on YouTube, none of us would have jobs right now. So I'm a raving fan of Paul for doing that. <laughs> Thank you. Dude. I'm a raving fan of Paul's shirt. <laughs> uh, but also justin because he goes above and beyond i had some things outside of work that he spent his personal time to come down and help me he doesn't ever admit it that we actually it's like big, each big other news. but he helped me string all my lights and bring ladders i mean he's just a, a really good right awesome on. Guy, so right on. Really that's cool and, uh, i deny it every time <laughs> <laughs> buffalo colonial you guys got anything i'm a raving fan of ducks he has just done so many different improvements at the Colonial that it just astounds me. Wow. What's your favorite one? Uh, the uh, lights that he's been putting in. They, oh. they just make a great difference in the, in the room itself. All right, cool. And his moving kits are really cool, too. Yeah. I'm a raving fan of Convoy of Hope for helping our tornado victims that hit all across the country. Mm. Nice. Awesome. All right, anybody else? Three, two, one. I am a raving fan of Hugh. Um, I have known him for a long time. Um, and I remember him coming to me with his two second lean stuff a few years back. And of course I was like, oh, that's just silly. Why would I want to save time? Like it's not that much extra time. Um, and then uh, I'm one of the few that does have manufacturing uh, background. And eventually it started to click after him talking about it so much. And I started paying attention and realized like how much of a difference this does make and how saving a few minutes in the morning making coffee can add up and does make a big difference. Uh, so I'm just a raving fan of him for for being around and then now giving me the opportunity to be part of of a two second lean company that has this culture that we're constantly improving wow. Wow. Um, wow. so yeah so just raving fan of him for, for you know being around and helping give me this opportunity to be able to do this so wow. kill you. Thank you all right gore principles so gore stands for greater ozarks realty um these are one of our principles this is number 22 we do not rise to the blank we fall back to our blank of preparation we think it is, team. We do not rise to the occasion. We fall back to our highest level of preparation. Exactly. Now, what wow. does this mean to you, Doc? Oh, powerful. It means that we train to the best of our ability to do the best that we can. Um, perfect example is our firefighters, our military personnel, and our law enforcement. They all are trained to the highest level of education that we can give them so that they can be the best that they can. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So, I mean, we, we have the uh, training and we're training every day. We're training right now um, so that we're prepared for anything that happens. So that way, if something big and stressful does happen, we're not going to rise up because people typically don't do that. We're just going to fall right. back when we fall back. We're not falling back far because of how high our training is that we're going to be able to meet every opportunity uh, 
that we can. So awesome. Love this, love this principle. Very good. Give a good yeah. example of this. So in the beginning, Hugh and I were making a lot of decisions and Hugh and I were putting out a lot of fires. And then we thought, why are we not training the leadership and every team member to really own process? And since then, we're able to sleep on the weekends and we get very few calls because the team has really taken this to heart and they've risen to such, not just the occasion, but their highest level of training is really exceptional at this point. So they handle 90% of what's really happening, all the moving parts without needing us to handhold or micromanage. It's been remarkable. Yep. Awesome. Anybody else have any input? Three, two, one. one. All right. We going? So again, kind of that one, we get weekends, that's right. <laughs> Company owner, we get our own weekends. Uh, we're one of like 10 people I can say that. Um, the second one was, I love this one, specifically because it's about the culture of problem solving that we create. And every day we train, and every day we have three S, it's about problem solving. Right? Each of you at the sites, all you guys do is you take ownership of things and you problem solve. And, and that is a missing element in most companies. So mm -hmm. this is creating that culture right there. Awesome. All right, let's move along. Dimming's 14 points. This is the number two of his 14 points. We are in a new economic age. Western management must awaken to challenges, must learn the responsibilities and take on leadership for change. We must adopt a new philosophy. New philosophy. You guys are terrific. A new philosophy. All right, what does this mean to you guys? We, we have gone through so many different changes to make lean a part of our lives. So we have created the new philosophy to follow, and Hugh has led us to that. Mm -hmm. Lisa, what do you got on this one? Well, it's just, um, it changes the way you think. Um, you see things differently, and um, it just, it... it makes you realize that there's more choices out there and a lot easier ways of doing things instead of doing it the same old hard way. Yep, exactly. awesome. So yeah, so with this one, uh, Dimmings had gone over to Japan after World War II and it helped was rebuilding their um, uh, infrastructure and what one, you know, helping them. And he had looked back to, to the Western management and was basically saying this to them of like, hey, these guys know what's going on. Things are going to change. You guys, you know, you guys need need to adopt the new philosophy in order to be able to keep up. Um, so just kind of real neat, real neat with this one of you guys. It's a whole new way of thinking of, mm -hmm. you know, two, two or three years ago, I was thinking completely differently than I am now uh, by kind of taking this and internalizing it and just new philosophy on life. So, all right. Continue education. So with this one, typically uh, we use this as a way to show other uh, two second leaning com companies improvements. So, you know, fast cap seating matters, you know, it is other companies we will pull their videos to see their improvements to see what they've shared with us. Yeah, when you guys are posting about what your teams have done, well, this is when we would share it so we can grow and get better and copy you guys because you guys are doing something right. Yep. But wow. today, uh, instead, I'm going to show you another uh, two second lean improvement that I've done for my personal life. Um, I play Dungeons and Dragons because I'm a big nerd, um, and so I run games. And so that's what this one has to do with: was me using two second lean on Dungeons and Dragons because I'm a nerd. <laughs> All right, hey kids, let's talk about my dice a little bit more. So along with uh, me talking about the transporting and whatnot, I moved them from the bags uh, into this nice tackle box. It's got multiple things for improvements. Of one, it's got the clear lid, so I can see the dice without actually having to open it. And then on this one, this one's the one I use whenever I'm running a game. Uh, I've got these little discs I use to uh, use as monsters. Uh, if I don't have the miniatures for them, I can use these little discs and then I've got them color coded to go with the dice along with uh, the white race markers to you know mark them. That way whenever I'm rolling, I can roll and know what dice go to what monster as they're moving around the map. So go team. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, the, the dice were very unorganized before I was able to do this. Um, and I've actually gone on to further improve this where the miniatures I do have, when I paint them, I paint them 
with different color, like, you know, the yellows will have like a yellow cape, like a big portion of it will be one color. So then I'll know like, hey, that's for the yellow dice. Um, so I just, I'm continuing to, to use two second lean uh, for personal life and whatnot too, so. All right. All right, Gore habits. So a lot of these came from the Gore principles and we split them off so we can get through more of them um, in each morning meeting. Uh, so this is number five. We strive to use blank instead of blank from our customer's perspective. Dean, what do you got? Hmm. Pull instead of push. What was it? Pull instead of push. See? Ooh, good guess. We wow. use pull instead of well push done. from our customer's perspective. All right. All right, Brittany, what does this mean to you? Um, so the last time we did this, I described this one as like pull, like we strive to use positivity like feedback instead of negativity. We have to take into consideration our customer, how they think, or else we're not really doing it right. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Justin, so we're at 930. How much more do we have to wrap? Hey, a few slides. Just a few slides. Okay. So we can we can rock through. Um, so yeah, so with this one, um, a lot of times I look at this one as a uh, thinking of the customer pulling things in rather than us pushing them onto the customer. So, so for the hotel perspective of instead of like pushing shampoos and stuff into the room, we have them easily available for them to grab, but they only grab, they only pull them to them when they need them. We're not just pushing stuff onto them. Right. Um, so that's what this one means to me. All right. Ono's precepts, re-improve what was improved for? Further improvement. Further improvement. This one's an easy one. We're constantly improving. I said the, the dice example I had just a moment ago, I've already improved that one several times. Um, same thing with the trailer thing. That one's probably going to get improved a couple of times. Just because you've improved something once doesn't mean it's done. You can continually improve it and find better ways to continue to do stuff. All right. All right, a little bit of stretching. All right, find that penny. Five, four, three, two, one. To the left. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> one. To the right. Sorry. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. All right, pig leg. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch. Five, four, three, two, one. The flamingo. Five, four, three, two, one. Other side. Five, four, three, two, and one. And this brings us into dashboard announcements. So dashboard announcements is where we'll put out stuff company wide. Um, talk about any you know major issues that involves everybody. So at this point, I'm gonna yeah. So that's what we usually talk about in this. At this point, it's uh let's get to work. So team. Let's get at it. For cards, stay humble. humble. <laughs> All right, and then our team will go into the battle plan. So at this point, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Thank you. Let's give Justin a quick round of applause. All right, Justin, awesome job. I'll take really a really good, quick good energy. Recap, really quick recap for everybody. Hugh, can you stop sharing, please? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there it is. Stop sharing. Okay, everybody see that? Yep. Okay, so really quickly, thanks for making it through a quick morning meeting. Um, I wanna share with you kind of what's going on with the framework here. A lot of people, you may have just thought that you just saw a morning meeting and you're like, oh yeah, we do that. But what you actually saw was a Gemba worker go ahead and shoot video edit it, upload it to YouTube, then assemble a slideshow, mm -hmm. then communicate complex ideas to their peers, and then lead those peers in discussion with questions instead of giving answers. The reason why two second lean culture takes hold in your fast caps and your senior matters and your juggernaut companies like that is because they have internalized that all of their workforce does the teaching. And it's not, I'm not saying it's 100% the case, but I am saying 100% of the people that I've ever <coughs> talked to, any 
one who's attempting to push and they're in that two second lean rut just trying to get it going. The owner or the leader, right? They're the one teaching. That's why they know it. They have internalized it. They care. The reason why they're not getting it to stick often is because at best they're getting people into the 30%. We have modified this meeting. In fact, our meetings are normally 45 minutes to an hour long. We got it lower because we are constantly learning every day. We dedicate that time to teaching. Uh, one quick note too, we'll open up for questions. Our 3S time is always before our morning meeting. It goes 3S, then morning meeting. It's very intentional. Almost everyone will think, oh, you know what? We'll save some, we'll be way more productive if we just do 3S after morning meeting. Terrible idea. If you know that you're doing morning meeting for 30 minutes, and then you have to shut your machine, you, sh you, sh you, sh you try to start work, and you have to turn your machine back off to go to morning meeting, at the beginning, you might as well just not do that and actually comply and do the 3S things, as opposed to starting morning meeting, then expecting everybody that the, the day will carry everyone away and you'll be wrapped up in those things. Um, so with that, this is why we're doing it. We only have questions, but this framework allows us anytime we need to, if we buy a new site, all of a sudden we plug them right into the framework, they have a week and then they start going through it and we just let time pass. This framework is the tool to build the culture. And as the owner or leader, all I do is support the whole structure and I make sure this keeps happening. This builds the culture of continuous improvers and critical problem solvers. And then they do all the work and take care of everything for you. All right, who has Q and A? Okay, questions. Uh, we've got seven of them, so we'll go through them pretty quick. This is for Justin. What would you say to the biggest critics of this process? Um, Cause you were a critic. No, yeah, I was a critic. It's one. Of the, it's when you sit down and do the math, like, and you realize like how. Like, I guess with two second lean, when I first saw it, this is a good thing. Was like, oh, the boss just wants to make more money. You know, it's about like doing stuff faster so the boss can make more money. And then after like being involved, it's do stuff faster with ease. It's making your job easier. It's I mean the doing stuff faster and whatnot is just a byproduct. Like this whole, you know, two second lean, it's about just making life easier, not about necessarily doing stuff faster. That's just the byproduct. So that would be what I would, you know, say the critics. It's not, it's not about doing stuff faster. It's that it's uh, doing stuff a lot easier so you don't have to think about it. It's just, oh, hey, I'm done, you know, so. Does it make your life better? Yeah. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's... I mean, there's, yeah, there's, said, from stuff on my truck, you know, stuff work, and then even it said the, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, which it's a weird thing that I use it for, but it makes doing that stuff a lot easier. So. Awesome. Okay. Here's a couple of questions from Bruce. How many gore principles are there and how do you share them and do you cover them daily? We cover one per day and it rotates. So today we had transportation, right? So the next one, the eight-way story is going to end up being, so whoever's going tomorrow, Doug, who's going tomorrow, that will end up being inventory. Right. The core. So, the core, core, core principles. Gore principles. How many are there? Gore principles. How many are there? Uh, 10, 26 core principles and 10 gore habits. Okay, so 26 gore principles. How do you share those around your teams remotely? So with that, in the mornings, every morning meeting, it will cycle. So today was gore principle number 22. Tomorrow it will be 23, and it will be a different presenter. So every time someone rotates up, they're presenting on something different. The secret is the person actually being trained is the presenter. So it's how quickly can you cycle your workforce through presenting, not necessarily through uh, through actually viewing principles, right? But basically, you just need time to pass. Okay, okay, very good. So that leads into this: <clears throat> many people are extraordinarily reticent to speak in public. Do you have any tips on how to help those people feel comfortable speaking up in a meeting? Lisa, uh, Lisa <laughs> was one of those people. Let's let her answer this question. I was an extremely timid person, wouldn't speak, wouldn't talk to Hugh or Dan at all when I first started with the company. And in doing the meetings, it got me out of my shyness and stuff. And just presenting to a small group made it so that I could talk to larger groups. Mm -hmm. And it's just it, the practice of it is 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 what what got me to be able to speak out and i'm not afraid to talk to just about anybody anymore were you mad at hugh that he made you do this at first yes yeah, yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> no, it's it's a very real thing. We'll have people that you know. I had I had 26 managers when we were in the China side, and it was it was a nightmare. But we basically gave them two options. One it was extreme, extreme positivity and support and encouragement, and we all leadership staff must be engaged. Then simultaneously, we were like, if you would like to go find a different company to go pay you to not do of what was requested for you and go find somewhere else. But here we're going to try this. And so right. it started off with management. They Good. got used to it. And then, then it was just like, by the way, in two weeks, it's this site. All right. And, you know, and then, night, and then, so basically everyone got, it. once they cycled through it one time, maybe two times, it was, it was just what you do. It wasn't anything scary. It's just a part right. of the whole routine. It wasn't a big deal. So I've got another little tip as well. And, and I've passed it on to a couple of people. That if you have a morning meeting, uh, maybe after a principal, um, break your team into groups of three and ask them just for 20 seconds to discuss that principle and then have a spokesperson nominated to talk about what they've just discussed and what it means to them and then rotate that each day. And that gives them a little chance to, to be that leader just of that little group and they've got the two people behind them. So that might help as well. <laughs> okay, um, question. Did Hugh, did you start this company from scratch or was it a functioning company before you bought it? I started this one from scratch and I okay. hand selected everyone to be on the team. Uh, that was a byproduct of having done a transit. I've, I've gone through two successful two second lean transformation and one catastrophic failure. And uh, it's definitely much more difficult to transition. It's not impossible because I went through two successful ones. It's just easier to do it right from the beginning. Okay, got two more questions. One, one for Justin, and it goes back to your trailer hitch improvement. At mm -hmm. what point did you decide to standardize on trailer hitches rather than differentiate between differing ones? Obviously, the root cause is that you've got different ones, and if you standardize it, you don't need to color code them. If, uh, if we end up upgrading equipment, that is definitely something we're going to do, because that, that did cross my mind whenever I had to get the, the three hitch was like, hey, if they were all the same, this would be easier. Um, but it's the you know equipment's still good right now. Uh, but down down the road, whenever we eventually um, will upgrade and need new equipment, that's definitely we're going to get some so that everything is standardized. Sometimes right. they, sometimes so, we're we're with the manufacturers. So if we buy a piece of equipment and it comes with a trailer, we didn't have a choice in that one. No. So I mean, obviously, this is an example of use your wit, not your wallet. Because yeah, you could go out and buy all this stuff. But you've used your wit. You've you've spent very little money, yeah. but it, it saves you obviously uh, time. Last yeah. question. Uh, this is an interesting one. How do companies structure their morning meeting and 3S if the business must be open to the public during the hours? For example, a retail store, customer service from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. is the best way to have the morning meeting and 3S take place before the business opens to the public? That's a fantastic question. Buffalo is currently open right now. So we have managed and mitigated risk and chaos. Sometimes we'll have customers enter and then we'll go pull members from the team, whoever's not presenting that day. The best case is yes, if you open your doors at 08, then start you know, before then at 07. So for instance, Lisa, at Lisa and Doug at Colonial, their site is currently closed until 9 a.m. versus um, our other sites is open 24 seven. So we had to work, work around that. Great question. Good. Okay, perfect. Paul, any more questions? <laughs> no, just you, great example, great job, great courage to pull this off. Hopefully everyone learned a lot. There are just no excuses. That's the bottom line. And you, you set a great example and your team's amazing. Thank you so much. They Excellent. Work, so. Yeah, it, and, and I want to say on behalf of AME and Paul, uh, a big, huge thank you for sharing this with everyone. Uh, it, it's unbelievable what we learn all the while. And each, each time we do one of these tours, we learn something new. And it's just fantastic experience that we want to share all around the world. So a great example of share, learn and grow. I do have a couple more questions, but I've got to give you those privately and then you can respond to them afterwards Hugh if, if that's okay because we're running out of time so uh, without further ado let's get into um, our feedback okay and our feedback we're going to run our poll 
we've got some extra questions as well, what we'd like to do uh, here. So uh, question number one, would you recommend an event like this to your network? Please, please put in your responses. I've got 53 people. Let's see how many we can get. Number two, have you been inspired to implement or continue with two second lean? Uh, number three, did you find today's tour valuable? Yes or no? Um, Laura, I thought we had one more question. Yes, it should be in there, Richard. Uh, I'm only showing three. Apologies, we'll have to get the next yeah. one. Okay. We'll have to get the next one. Okay, keep going, everyone. I've got 31 people responded, 62% now. Let's get up to 80% if we can. Oh, these numbers are absolutely awesome. They really are. Okay, I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So again, it's virtually 100% that everybody's got feedback, which is really, really good. So Hugh, you knocked it out of the park again. It's great. Our next tour, we're going to keep you in suspense. Um, so here's the, uh, the schedule the next year. We're going to bring it to you in January. So we've got lots more to come in 2022. Just a reminder, please, uh, if, you've, if you've got um, a, a, a journey that you're going to embark on to become operational excellent, then this particular tool that AME has will help you immensely. Go to ame.org and look for Lean Sensei in the search and download the free copy of our benchmarking tool. It is absolutely awesome. Just a final ask. Uh, we're a, a, a volunteer organization. We would love you to donate to our cause if you could. Uh, we've got lots and lots of volunteers that do this because they just want to share uh, all the great stuff that you, you have around the world. And we're all passionate about it. So you can see the website at the bottom. Please donate if you can. And on behalf of all of us at AME and Paul, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas all around the world. We know how many people come and join us and watch these, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Great, Merry Richard. Christmas. Brought to Merry you by AME and PaulAkers.net, where you can find all my books and resources on my website, PaulAkers.net, for free. You can even get my new app, Two Second Lean Play, where I have all my books available in nine languages in the audio format designed for you to listen while you work and play at paulacres.net or lean play. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody.